What's the worst best thing you've ever seen happen at a wedding? Story one, roller skate wedding. Bride fell down and opened a gusher on her head. They finished the ceremony and took her to the hospital. She ended up needing emergency surgery to drain fluid build up in her head and ended up having to relearn how to walk. The adverse effects were from the surgery that saved her life, not the accident itself. Sometimes to save someone, you gotta fudge some cow up. Story two, I was at my Counson's wedding, not actually related, but she's my godmother's daughter. Her and her husband hired this performer for their reception. This woman was dressed up like a plant and was in what looked like a large cement planter outside. My mother and I decided to sit right next to where she was. Every so often, she would change position, but did so kind of slowly, almost like she was being moved by the wind in slow motion. Now that in and of itself isn't really that cool. What was great, though, was the fact that this woman dressed as a plant was manufacturing fun for herself. She would stay still and wait for people to stop in front of her and start a conversation. When she was sure they hadn't noticed her, she would start moving and scare the cow out of the people that were there. My mother and I got a good hour or so of amusement from that. Story 3. My ex-husband and I were at his cousin's wedding. Another cousin of his, 25M, was a groomsman. He was a giant guy, 6'4", roughly 400 pounds, and the life of the party, picking kids up and throwing them in the air, holding the groom on his shoulders, dancing like a maniac, having a blast. I went to the bathroom and came back to the reception to the music, and everyone circled around the dance floor, just panicked. There was Matt, completely purplish red, and on the floor while a guest performed CPR and others were calling 911, taking his pulse, screaming. He passed away from a massive heart attack, pronounced dead on the scene. The reception ended right then and there, obviously. The bride and groom were supposed to leave for their honeymoon to Hawaii that same evening. They ended up not going, and instead they stayed home to attend the funeral, where the groom was a pallbearer. Story 4. My buddy married a woman who was estranged from most of her family, save her 90-plus-year-old grandpa. They were so close, and he was in poor health that the wedding was held in grandpa's backyard so he could be there. 36 hours before the wedding, he had a massive heart attack and was rushed to the ER. They were recommending hospice palliative care, and bride-to-be was going to call off the wedding. Grandpa insisted it go on even with him not being at his own house because people were flying from all over the country, all during intermittent bouts of consciousness. Fast forward to the wedding and this determined granddad broke out of the hospital, just unhooked all his equipment IV stuff and took a cab to his own house hours before the wedding. The family that was invited was incredibly upset, but knew how close he was to the bride, and he ended up staying through the whole ceremony without issue, slept in his bed and then returned to the hospital the next day. Think he also drank a few beers. Absolute legend of a man. Story 5. There was a couple who had been best friends forever, like many years. They never put the boyfriend-girlfriend label on anything, but they were both in the military, lived together, and were an item long before they introduced each other as girlfriend and boyfriend. By the time they started dating, they only really dated for about a year before they got married, even though they'd effectively been together for over a decade. Their families knew each other. Everyone who knew them knew they were going to eventually get married. It wasn't weird if you knew them. During their wedding, they were brought to the dance floor to play some kind of newlywed game while the DJ, who didn't know them, emceed the event. He asked how long they dated, to which they said just under a year. The DJ goes on this rant about how he can't believe people that only know each other for a short period of time and get married. He unironically asked them if they understood that they were getting married and that he seriously doubted that they'd known each other for long enough to make that kind of commitment. Yeeks! Story 6. My wife was recently a bridesmaid for her friend, who she hadn't really seen in a few years. It was actually a nice wedding, and the reception was also pretty nice. Unfortunately, the groomsman my wife was paired with was under the impression that she was going to go home with him after the wedding. Me and my wife have been together for almost 20 years, and some rando she met one or two times is going to sweep her off her feet when her husband and kid are in the same room? Story 7. My cousin had her wedding at a zoo because she was a vet tech, and her first date was at a zoo as well as her engagement, so it just made sense. I was a bridesmaid, so we got to get especially up close to the animals. The giraffes kept trying to eat the bouquets during the pictures, and they were non-toxic, so it was mostly just funny and cute. Story 8. Boy male wedding in England. Registrar stands at front of the ceremony before starting the vows, and for some inexplicable reason says, Get your rings ready, boys. Q30 gaze bursting out in uncontrollable laughter, and the older family members at the front looking around confused and or disapprovingly. Story 9. Watching the groom and his best men ride the bathtub that was used for the beer down a hill and not pass away. It was a hill for loading boats into a river. It was like a 150-foot ride, and they got going scary fast. The bath broke into pieces, but all five of the men were fine, somehow. Edit. Wow, this blew up, thanks, y'all.
Story 10. The bride and groom are at the altar. The minister is speaking, saying something to the effect of, We are here in the presence of friends and family who are all here to give this union their blessing. To which the groom's mother stands up and says, No, not everyone. I do not give this my blessing. It was both horrible and kind of hilarious. Story 11. I worked a wedding for an older couple, both in their 60s, once. The groom's cake featured a manicured hand holding a banana with frosting writing that said, to have and to hold. The bride and groom were lovely people, and obviously them and their guests all had a great sense of humor. Story 12. I was at a wedding where the family had a tradition that between the wedding and the reception, the couple would take a 15-minute break to share a large bowl of chicken soup. They ate at a table in the middle of the courtyard, and no one was allowed to come near. Not only does it prevent the starving bride problem, but it emphasizes that they are accountable only to each other. Story 13. At my wedding, the registrar said the best man's name instead of mine during the I do's and my wife was too busy staring at me to notice. My mate with pure class started to stand up and walk up to take my place. I gave him the evil monkey stare and the whole room was laughing pretty hard. The registrar's face was bright red and she apologized for it, lol. Story 14. At my cousin's wedding, one of his college friends got really drunk. There was this part during the after party where it was just the bride and groom dancing while everyone else stood around in a circle, but he kept pushing in and dancing with them. After about 30 seconds, the best man, another one of my cousin's college friends, finds the perfect opportunity to tackle the guy out of the circle without hitting my cousin or his wife. Story 15. This is pretty tame compared to some of y'all's experiences, but here it goes. My parents never got a real wedding due to them both being in the military and my mom being deployed to Desert Storm fairly last minute. They did a justice of the peace ceremony before she left for Saudi. For their 20th anniversary, they decided to have a small vow renewal ceremony on their favorite beach near where they first met with a couple family members and close friends, and some amazing shenanigans went down. 1. While my mom was getting ready, the setting of her wedding ring came clean off, and we searched the hotel room for an hour to find the stone. We half-jokingly, half-superstitiously wondered if my dad was going to meet a horrible end that day. 2. I was my mom's bridesmaid, but the day before the ceremony, I crashed my bicycle and got hella whiplash. I couldn't move my neck at all and kept it tilted in the most awkward position for the next day. We sent my dad out to get some aspirin and he accidentally gets the stuff laced with NyQuil. We didn't realize this until too late. I spent the first half of the ceremony wobbling and trying not to pass out, and it shows in some of the photos. 3. During the entire ceremony, some drunk idiot we've never seen before set up camp on the rocks right next to where we were. He was super off-key yelling, singing all the lyrics to Let's Get It On. The chaplain himself couldn't keep a straight face. 4. My cousin was in charge of videotaping the ceremony on my mom's cheap digital camcorder, and she did a pretty good job for a 13-year-old kid. However, on our way to the reception, a guy pulls up next to our car on his bike completely butt, and my cousin couldn't resist snagging A of that. Turns out she recorded over some of my dad's would-have-been-beautiful vows. My mom now has a 10-second clip of a cyclist as part of her wedding video. This was probably my favorite story when we were reminiscing at their 30th anniversary last year. Edit Grammar. Story 16. Worst equal sign groom passed out. Heat stroke maybe, it was super hot. Bonked his head pretty good when he went down. Had to go to ER. Wasn't as bad as it sounds, they got married at the hospital by same priest. Reception was a bit toned down that night but when on best groom and groom both decided wedding food was cow while shopping for caterers. We had grills set up by the beach, and they paid people to just do burgers, grilled chicken, grilled pineapple, and other stuff all day. There was also an ice cream bar. TBH, I appreciate a good grilled chicken sandwich much more than some nasty fish that's been in a warmer for four hours. Story 17. Worst, the very drunk groom screaming in the face of the wedding planner. Me, because the bar ran out of Grey Goose. We wouldn't have been able to keep serving him anyway. Or when a different bride's uncle showed up to deliver the wedding cake, and he didn't secure it in his car, so the whole thing toppled over. Story 18. The worst thing involved the priest's homily at my uncle's wedding. He basically said marriage doesn't last forever, and not expect it to last so long. Exactly everything you wouldn't want to hear, especially from a priest. Best thing was at the same wedding. My uncle's friends rigged a cannon to go off at the end of the wedding. It went off scaring the hell out of everyone and having the police show up with rifles. Story 19. Best and worst was at my wedding. We had a photo go viral the next day. We kissed, our second kiss, mind you, with the officiant holding an achievement unlocked, obtain a wife sign. Our friend who took the picture put it on Reddit the next day and it exploded. We saw so many posts of people loving it, hating it, calling my wife fat, calling me a misogynist for 
making her have that on the first kiss. Never mind, not only was it not the first kiss, but it wasn't even my idea to have it. My wife's a much more hardcore gamer than I have ever been, and she's the one who had it made. She and I both shed a few tears in sadness, anger, frustration, and even laughed a bit at the time. And neither of us went near Reddit for years after. That was seven years ago? We're still very happily married. The sign is over our TV still, and we see our image pop up on websites trying to claim it every cook of months still. I don't know if we were the first to do it, but for sure we were the first to have it go viral. Story 20. At a wedding between a man and white man, the grandmother of the groom got up at the reception to give a toast. She started, The first time my grandson introduced me to him, I turned and said to him, You know I don't like white people. The room erupted into laughter and hysteria. The groom quickly grabbed the mic from her and made her sit down, so we never got to know where she was going with that, which was probably for the best. Story 21 After my sister's wedding, the photographer is taking various shots against the background of the hotel garden, bride's family, groom's family, etc., etc., then for some reason the photographer gets my dad and the groom's dad to stand either side of my sister and shake hands in front of her. At the time they just went along with it, but in every photo of that scene, the dads look like they've just sealed a great livestock deal. And my sister's grinning awkwardly like, Story 22 The bride's ex-gate crashed the wedding, snatched the garland, equivalent to ring, from the groom and tried to place it on the bride. He was thrashed by almost everyone close to the bride or the groom. I'm not one of them. The police we called and I left after that, but the marriage took place. Story 23. Officiant at a conservative Christian wedding said during his talk, So, the wedding night. During my wedding night, there was something I wanted to do, but I was too nervous to ask for it, so I didn't say anything. But I encourage you two to do it. And that thing is kneel and pray together. Best man lost it, and luckily it broke the tension. Hands down the awkwardest moment of my life. Story 24. I was at large hotel and there was a good-sized wedding reception in the bar area. After a couple drinks, I decided to use the restroom. I went into a stall and a bouquet of flowers was shoved into the toilet. I turned around to see a few guys that looked to be groomsmen and nicely dressed guests. I said that someone had shoved a bouquet in the toilet. One of the men proclaimed in a stereotypical boy accent, Oh no, he didn't! I then saw the group storm out. I went ahead and used another stall and washed up. When I returned to the bar area, there was a complete full-on brawl happening. People were beating the cow out of each other, throwing stuff, screaming. I found my SO at the time and we kind of stood by and watched. It poured out to the parking area and then the police showed up. Several people were arrested and I saw the poor bride crying her eyes out. This was in the middle of Wisconsin. These people all looked very attractive, healthy, suburban, upper middle class families. It was very surprising as I saw them all celebrating together only an hour or so before. Story 25. This is a story about my ex-in-law's family. I doubt they are on Reddit, but I would like to share this as it is very touching. I've seen video footage of it as evidence, and it's incredible. The father of the bride is Jack. He was a teacher all of his life, and from the stories a very intelligent and interesting man. When I first met him, after the wedding I shall mention, he had full-onset Alzheimer's. He could not communicate, had to be led around with a strap around his waist so he did not run away, and at that first dinner he kept eating the pats of butter with the wrappers on. He needed constant attention and monitoring and was oblivious to the world around him. I'd look him in the eye, though, and swear there was something going on in there. To the story of his daughter's wedding, this was a couple of years before I met him, but he was then still as unresponsive as I had known him. During the wedding, his daughter had insisted that no matter how she wanted to dance with her dad, she'd chosen an old song that I think he would sing to her as a kid. The song started, and she managed to coax him up to his feet and lead him around the dance floor a little, him staggering awkwardly. Then, as everyone watched on the most incredible thing happened, from nowhere he started to smile. And then he looked at his daughter and started to sing the song. He had been completely mute for years, and here, for this moment, he came back to life. Everyone was crying their eyes out as he swung her around the dance floor, smiling and singing like the dad she had loved from before. The dance ended, and as quickly as his consciousness returned, it left again, and he's not knowingly smiled or spoken since. But for that two or three minutes, when it mattered most to his daughter on her special day, Daddy came back. Edit. Thank you for the gold and silver kind strangers. Story 26. Father of the groom stood up to make his toast. His toast consisted of asking his wife to confirm that he was not the groom's biological father. The wife said nothing, and everyone else pretended nothing had happened. As far as I know, there wasn't even a rumor about that, so I don't know. Story 27. Went to a friend's wedding years ago at a super nice venue overlooking Lake Travis outside Austin. On a cliff. It was to be an outdoor wedding. Just like clockwork, it starts pouring ten minutes before it's supposed to begin. They scramble and move the ceremony to under the back-covered patio at the main building of the venue. It's very crowded, everyone is pretty wet, pissed, and the rain is super loud. 
looks to be a total disaster. The makeshift altar happened to be directly in front of the view of the lake, but it was so dark and rainy you couldn't even see the lake. All of a sudden, like in a flipping movie, the rain stops, the clouds pass, and a huge rainbow appears directly behind the bride and groom over the lake. You couldn't have placed the rainbow any closer to the bride and groom, and it really was something special, along with the free food and booze and hotel room. Story 28. I went to my husband's brother's wedding a few years ago. His ex came, uninvited. We thought this was a little weird, but didn't think much of it as she sat down. She was carrying a baby. When the any objections was called, she stood up and said that he had gotten her pregnant, and this was his son. The groom looked ashamed. He tried to deny it, but then she held up proof that it was his child. The wife ran out of the wedding. They broke up. Yes, you may be thinking, well, I mean, he could have gotten her pregnant before he and his ex-fiancé were dating, right? Nope. He and his ex-fiancé had been dating for three years, engaged for one and a half. The baby was only about two months old. Edit. For those asking what happened after that, my husband and me stopped talking to his brother. I did become friends with both exes. Turns out his other ex didn't know he was engaged or dating someone at the time. She had found out a month before the wedding. What happened next was a huge plot twist. Both exes are now married, caring for the child. They are both. Story 29. College friends of mine were both from pretty fancy families back east. She had been raised by her mom and stepdad, who sprang for wedding and reception at their extra posh country club. Her dad and stepmom were also fancy people, but basically disinterested parties in the whole event until two days before the ceremony, when stepmom showed up to preview the location. She was aghast, shocked, about the condition of the wooden chairs the country club supplied for guests to sit on during the ceremony. So much so that she contacted the grounds department and demanded that the chairs be painted before the event. She offered to pay. Imagine the horror of all parties involved when the guests stood up after the ceremony finished with parallel horizontal stripes on their garments from the not-dry fresh paint. The groundskeepers has painted the chairs the evening before the wedding. So not only did the jealous dad and stepmom pay for unnecessary chair painting, they paid for a of dry cleaning. Story 30. Our videographer was about 45 minutes late to the ceremony. Catholic Mass, so it's usually about an hour. Missed the vows and all the other usual wedding stuff. They stayed late to the reception to make up for it. Thankfully, he was at least good enough to call and say he would be late, so we could get some friends and family to take video at the last minute. But then we had to sue him to actually get our unedited video over six months after it was supposed to be finished. Currently looking for someone to make something decent out of the combination of cell phone videos and professional stuff. Story 31. I grew up going to Jewish weddings and tradition is to put the bride and groom on separate chairs and lift them into the air and sometimes they hold hands over a divider that separates men and women. Well, I went to one where the bride fell off the chair and she started crying. I always felt like it was a bad idea in the first place ever since I was little, thinking what if this exact scenario plays out. Story 32. My horseback riding instructor told me a story of a time somebody requested a horse for a traditional wedding. I forget what culture, but I think it was Native American. They put the horse through the aisleway. These people surrounded the horse with firecrackers and sparklers in the small enclosed space. The horse then proceeded to bad person out and bolted out of that place while destroying anything and everything on his way out. They never brought a horse to a wedding again. Story 33. High school friend's wedding. Her future grandpa-in-law, the groom's grandpa, was the efficient. He dedicated 20 minutes of the service going on and on about how God created man with one head because two heads is too overwhelming. Therefore, there should only be one head in this marriage and household. Bride is to be subservient to, groom. It was essentially him going on that she's about to be a slave to every future need and desire of her husband. It was ridiculous. Story 34. Wedding photog here. I've seen a lot of crazy cow after 200 some weddings. I'll give the best and the worst best man speeches I ever heard. Worst? The best man talked for about 15 minutes, regaling tales of formal close relationship conquests the groom had. One was literally, Hey Teddy, remember that time you banged that chick in the cornfield on top of your Mustang? God oh no crazy to see you wived up now. The bride looked like she was about to stab him. The best toast I ever heard was the best man who was the groom's older brother. He stood up, took the mic and said, Kino, I love you like a brother patted him on the shoulder and then sat back down. Story 35. I've told this story before, but it definitely fits. My friend's dad had just passed away of cancer after fighting for a few years, and me and another friend went to funeral to pay our respects and be there for the family. We got there a little early and met up with my friend, his girlfriend, and his brother in the church's entryway. There was a wedding finishing up in there, so we had to wait, and we just stood there waiting to set things up. The wedding finally lets out, and we see the guests rolling out, followed by the wedding party. All of the bridesmaids and groomsmen were dressed in full Adidas tracksuits and sneakers. 
Then the bride and groom make their appearance, and she is wearing a pink wedding dress with a pair of Adidas sneakers and a track jacket over the dress. I think they saw the memorial posters and realized that we were there for a funeral, because they stopped dancing, straightened up, and hurried outside. I looked at my friend and we couldn't help but laugh at the situation. Those people were doing their thing and having fun and it certainly lightened the mood of a very sad day, which is what his dad would have wanted. Story 36. The maid of honor put on a jersey over her dress and a baseball cap. I think she hid it in a big purse. Then started rapping about how proud and happy she was that the bride was getting married to a man that cared for her. It was really heartwarming and hilarious. I recorded it on my old phone, but sadly we couldn't get the video back. Someone next to me made a fresh Prince of Bel-Air reference, of course. Story 37. I was best man at my best friend's wedding. I'm not gonna lie, I cry at weddings, but I was gonna make an effort not to cry this time. Everything was going well. The bridesmaids and groomsmen took their places. As did the groom, I'm standing next to my best friend. So happy for him. The song starts to play and his bride walks out and looks beautiful in her dress. I smile and look back at my friend to see his shoulders kinda bouncing. Then I heard a few sniffles and a quiet cry come from him. My first thought was, don't you flipping do this, but then it was too late and I shed a couple of tears and put my hand on his shoulder. It's a small thing, but the fact that I got to share it with one of the best friends I've ever had makes it very special to me. Story 38. During a three-day wedding, the first night had a raging party. Everyone had just really good clean fun. Nobody was heinously drunk or dramatic. The food was awesome. The servers were hilarious. The music was the perfect volume and style. Truly a once-in-a-lifetime kind of party. And everyone had an absolute blast from the 90-year-old grandpa to the one-year-old toddler. Next day was the wedding. The bride and groom are coming separately to the church. But the groom is late. He's stuck in traffic, but he'll be there. He's all ready and tucked up, so it's literally just slide into the church and get to the altar. He was nervous standing there because he'd been so late, 45 minutes, because of the accident, but whatever, he's there now. Bride is stunning and doesn't care that things are delayed. Nothing can ruin this day. They say their I do's and start to walk back down the aisle. Groom slams to the floor dead before he hits. Massive aneurysm took him out. Photographer has rapid shots of him going down. The traffic he hit on the way there was a result of the bride's grandparents in a car accident. Also dead on impact. Edit. Forgot to mention that the third day of the wedding was supposed to be brunch and golfing spa beach stuff. The resort was very compassionate and comped back the day, but still provided all the services booked that people felt okay to show up for. Not many did, obviously. Story 39, so my husband and I put off getting married for years. We both sensed a future disturbance in the force on the horizon if we dared to, what with both of our parents being divorced and remarried and all of them being insane. Finally, we were buying property together and decided to bite the bullet. We tried for as small and casual as possible. It ended up with like 30 people, which was 30 too many. It was that bad. My mother-in-law showed up in a wedding dress. FYI, I was not wearing one. So that happened. My estranged father sent me a vicious letter because I dared to invite him as an olive branch. Apparently, I did not grovel enough, and my stepfather was going to be there, and that was my fault, too. My brother-in-law invited A of people I didn't know, unexpectedly, and drank some special bottle of wine my stepmother-in-law flipped the fudge out about and made a giant screaming scene over. The efficient arrived drunk AF. We were both raised by wolves and didn't know thing one about getting married and had no idea we needed a license and didn't have one. So we didn't actually get married. We left for three months on our honeymoon and did the paperwork when we got back. The efficient was still, drunk AF, and our marriage license is hysterical. Literally every line is crossed out, and the date is like 3 4 6 10 11 30 0 0 0 1. Story 40. Attended a wedding where the venue had to be changed to the zoo at the last minute. I was unaware one could even have a zoo wedding, but apparently there's a pavilion for just such events. A member of the wedding party arrived early and decided to get a jump on the drinking became drunk and passed out on the picnic tables outside the pavilion area, across from the monkeys. When I asked if anyone was aware there was a passed out person, I was told, oh yeah, no worries, they do that a lot. It never would have crossed my mind to get all messed up up at the zoo, but now I've seen it. Story 41. If you were to ask my friend's bride, I suppose I was the worst thing she'd seen at a wedding. The groom was my best friend from grade school. I arrived from out of town the day before the wedding. I had never met her. But after watching them interact at the rehearsal and the rehearsal dinner and listening to him unload a litany of complaints about their relationship the morning of the wedding, I was convinced they shouldn't get married. I lobbied him hard to just walk away. The wedding was in Los Angeles. I told him I'd drive him to Vegas and call her from the road and deliver the bad news. He thought about it but declined. At one point on the wedding day, I was giving her and her bridal party a ride to the hairdresser while plotting to call him afterwards and lobby him again. I arrived at the church early just to make sure I had the parking spot by the side door. 
pointed towards the highway. Fifteen minutes before the wedding started, I pointed to the side door of the church and told him that if he headed towards that door at any point in the ceremony, I would be at the car before him and would drive him away. He married her anyway. The marriage lasted less than a year. He and I are still good friends. Story 42. I love this story, and I hope I can really tell it to the fullest. It was a late summer in southern Indiana. My wife, a former professional baker, volunteered to make a cake for one of her best friends, her betrothed, and about 200 guests. She dug in, and with a week's preparation and work, there was a five-layer cake for 200 people, probably more. We get the cake to the venue. Lo and behold, they don't have a flipping refrigerator for the cake. That buttercream icing is just going to have to hold. Now the bride is a gritty girl, super intellectual feminist who likes a good drink or several, maybe a toke or several. By the time the reception got to the cake, my wife, who was also a bridesmaid, was getting fairly well lit riding in the bride's wake of party. She pulls me close, telling me that the cake is going to fall apart, but she has an idea to distract anyone from that. I looked over and there was a certain Tower of Pisa vibe going on in the pastry department. Scrummy, but not a showstopper. After the cake thing married people do, except nothing mushed in anyone's face, my wife started handing out slices. Starting with the first guest, she said, Here's your cake. You look hot. Over and over. Oh, thanks for the cake. It looks great. You look hot. Uh, thanks. 200 times. Later, there were keg stands and she did the worm while dancing. Story 43. Context. I work at a banquet hall, so on average I may watch a little less than 100 weddings a year. Best. A little boy, about four years old, eagerly catching the garter during the garter toss, only to be told by whom I assumed was one of his relatives what it meant, resulting in the boy throwing the garter as far as he could and running away in terror. Worst, bridesmaid's boyfriend gets drunk, starts fight with his girlfriend, bridesmaid. He gets physical with her and rips her dress. The groom intervenes and gets in the dude's face for starting SAT at his wedding. Groom and boyfriend begin shoving and groom's mother tries to break it up. Boyfriend shoves the groom's mother. Groom goes ballistic and starts beating the cow out of the boyfriend. Boyfriend manages to get away, but not before grabbing his, I presume now ex-girlfriend's, purse off her chair and makes a run for it. He steals her car and gets pulled over by the cops about two miles down the road for driving on the wrong side. At this point, everyone at the reception was totally smashed, and when the cops came, they just sat everyone on the curb like they were teenagers because literally no one was sober enough to drive home. They snuck in their own nips. This was proven by police. The bride complained the next day that we cleaned up everything before the rented room time was up, even though at this time, everyone way being benched by the police, so no one was going back to the reception. They wanted a full refund, which was denied. Story 44. My brother got married in the gazebo in his wife's hometown center in the middle of October. The night before the local high schooler's toilet papered the trees surrounding the gazebo as a Halloween prank. In the middle of the ceremony, the flower girl loudly exclaimed, Look at all the toilet paper! It was pretty awful for my sister-in-law and her mother, but a great laugh for me. Story 45. The night before my wedding, I went out with some friends. The matron of honor's husband also tagged along. We went to a bar and had all of one drink then went back to my parents' house and played Mario Kart for a little while, before calling it a night early because the next day was kind of going to be a big deal. Matron's husband leaves before the Mario Kart even started. Whatever. Fast forward to the next day and my now wife is furious with me for staying out all night before the wedding. I told her we didn't, and had my friends and brother back me up. Turns out the matron of honor's husband didn't come home until really late early. He didn't make the wedding because he was so out of it. Never did find out where he disappeared to that night, but I've always wondered. Story 46. Someone's sanitary towel fell off and landed on the dance floor, and someone else just kicked it to the side so that the bride's dress didn't sweep it up. It just sat there all night. Not related. In movies and stuff, you see Americans shoving the cake into their partner's face. Just mashing it up all over the face. If I saw that, I'd be appalled. Is this an actual thing? Why would you do that? Story 47. Well, the one wedding I was at that I remember, all the bridesmaids went barefoot because they started arguing about shoes, and the bride told them, they could go barefoot for all she cared. So they did. The pastor doing the service also mentioned the knights of the round table, and both the bride and groom had to suppress laughter because they both loved Monty Python and the Holy Grail and are history buffs. I'm still in contact with them, and they're still going strong. Story 48. I swear this is true. Saw it as a church employee. A wedding was supposed to start, and all the guests, flowers, musicians, and priests are in place, but neither the bride or groom and their immediate families are there. The priest finally went and called. Turns out that there was a fight the night before at the rehearsal dinner between members of both families, and the wedding was called off. Reception costs, florist costs, everything, all wasted. Priest had to go out and tell the guests that it had been called off. A few months later, it was rescheduled. 
Wedding day arrives. Guests are in place. Florist, musicians, priest, you guessed it. The entire wedding party and their families were no shows. Priest calls. There had been another fight between family members the night before. Priest again had to go out to the guests. You're not going to believe this. Don't know what ever happened to that couple because the church refused any further reschedule. Story 49. I saw a big brawl and the bride and groom break up. Midway through the reception, no one could find the bride. Turns out she was in her new husband's car, going at it with her ex-boyfriend. He hadn't even been invited, but apparently the bride had texted him for one last go-around. The groom's sister dragged her out of the car by her hair and proceeded to beat her up. The bride ended up with a broken nose and both eyes blackened. When the bride's family separated them, her mother took a swing at the groom's sister and ignited a brawl involving at least 50 people. It was ugly. I was one of the groomsmen, and we did what we could to separate everyone. Eventually, we had to just give up and defend ourselves against both sides. Three people were hospitalized. One was permanently blinded in one eye, a second had a badly broken pelvis and detached retina, and the third ended up with internal bleeding. No one was arrested, I guess living in a small town where half the police force was in attendance has its perks. It's kind of creepy how well the whole incident was just quietly swept under the rug. The groom just sat crying afterwards, and we didn't leave him alone that night. He went on his honeymoon with the best man and tried to have a good time. Poor guy still has commitment issues over five years later. Story 50. I kind of witnessed this from the kitchen. It came to me in stories from the servers and once glanced into the dining room. God's where to begin? The bride overheard her new mother-in-law saying something like, I wish my son didn't marry that bad person. Argument ensued. The groom, after promising his bride that he wouldn't get too drunk or get stoned at all, did both then passed out on the patio in a pile of his own vomit. I heard that many shots of tequila were involved. I believe this was around 8.30 or 9 p.m. The DJ Best Man at one point played that SNL Justin Timberlake song, In My Pants, this is the part I saw. I peeked into the room when I heard it from the kitchen and saw the bride storm across the dance floor screaming, You can't play this at my wedding! One of the servers saw the bride crying with her mom saying that she just wanted to go home. I think around 9.30 or so, Everyone who worked there was devastated for that poor girl. One of my co-workers wanted to go out there and hug her, but that would have obviously been inappropriate. It was just terrible. We figured there was an annulment in the days ahead. I hope she's okay. Story 51. My brother's wedding is where I saw both the best and the worst thing happen when we found out the caterers got the dates mixed up and weren't going to show. Several family friends hooked us up by organizing with each other and calling around town while the ceremony carried on. They ended up getting a chain restaurant fast food place called El Pollo Loco to cater within the hour. My new sister-in-law was still pretty pissed to have to substitute what she spent months planning for fast food, though the guests had zero complaints and were really none the wiser to the mishap. The original caterers ended up compensating them, which paid for a pretty nice honeymoon. Story 52. When people came to my sister's wedding, my niece, who was around 12 or 13, was assigned to greet people and take their gifts except she was removing the cards from the gifts and putting them in a separate pile, so my sister didn't know from whom she got the gifts. She felt really bad. I told her not to worry, cheered her up a little when I let her dance with me. She was very proud of her dress that had colored stripes on it and liked to twirl it a bit. She had a rough mother, then hit her own demons, but has now been clean and sober for almost five years. Story 53. My friend's future mother-in-law was a grouchy human, and there was no real love lost between them. The wedding ceremony was set to take place on a long strip of land that jutted into a water pond. It was long and phallic, a red carpet down the middle for the aisle, leading up to the pretty gazebo where the wedding party would stand for the ceremony, with rows of four plastic chairs on either side, next to which was a really steep slope down into the water. The wedding guests were seated. The groom and groomsmen were standing waiting for the bride. I was sitting two rows behind the groom's mother when a flash of movement catches my eye. The rather large woman was suddenly no longer seated next to her husband and had entirely disappeared. It took us all a few seconds to realize that her plastic chair had collapsed underneath her, and she had literally slid upside down on her back all the way down the embankment and into the pond. All we could see of her was her purple shoes sticking up out of the water. The groom in his fine wedding suit was the first into the water to rescue his mum, and they both came up wet and spluttering, but without any real damage. But such was her temperament that she didn't see the funny side of it at all. She insisted the wedding be postponed by a few hours and that she be taken home to change and get her hair redone. The guests all headed to the bar to wait it out doing our very best not to fall about laughing at the spectacle. The groomsmen were dispatched to ask us all politely not to mention the incident at all, which of course just made it even harder to keep a straight face. But 
Hardest of all was to keep composure when we realized the DJ, a good friend of the bride, has changed his playlist to include songs by Wet Wet Wet, Yellow Submarine, and others that just made that wedding the most memorable I've ever attended. Story 54. The bride passed out on the bathroom floor by 8 p.m. Her parents and sister had already walked out due to her speech. She did not really mean to be tactless. The minister walked out before dessert because of her length, but the mother of the groom was so classy. She cared for her as though nothing was wrong and instead of being horrified, merely said she had had a big day. Story 55. Seeing a friend marrying a man she clearly didn't love and listening to all her relations exclaim how much they were into each other and how happy she looked. I mean, you could see how unhappy she was from space. Cow started to slide south on the honeymoon and just kept sliding. She wound up with the groom's brother who was the sheep of the conservative Baptist family. The whole thing was weird and felt out of place. Like something from the American Deep South and not like I was in Auckland at all. The bride asked if I would give up my seat at the reception for a relative that arrived late and I've never accepted an offer so quickly. On the other side of the ledger, a man in a Darth Vader helmet streaked my brother's wedding. Story 56. We were at my uncle's wedding and they decided to take a picture with everyone. So my sister and I were just somehow pushed to the edge and she nearly fell off the stage and she caught my tie. I then took hold of my brother's suit and he in turn tried to hang on to me but we all ended up falling. We still have the picture too. Story 57. Went to a wedding of a former friend. Groom, 18 at the time, and bride, 17 at the time and heavily pregnant, decided that morning they wanted to get married. Manipulated my husband's grandmother into buying a couple hundred dollars of decorations and set the thing up at a park pavilion they didn't rent out. It was November and so cold, the bride's sister ended up stealing industrial plastic wrap from her job to create a wind bear. The main problem that day was the bride's sister. The wedding went as follows. Bride's sister let her child play loud phone games for half the ceremony, confiscated the phone, resulting in the child screaming for the rest of the ceremony, proceeded to text her incarcerated boyfriend mid-ceremony, answered a phone call from said incarcerated boyfriend mid-ceremony, looked at her sister and the groom like they were the rude ones for interrupted her call with their wedding, left early after promising to help with cleanup, but left her screaming child for the bride and mother of bride to take care of. Add in turning the park public bathroom into a backwater bridal suite, and a Kermit and Miss Piggy topped wedding cake that fell apart. And you have one of a wedding. Story 58. Best thing ever. My cousin's wedding was so unique. She did it in the Strand Theater by her friend with an online certificate to marry them. Then, for their first dance as a wedded couple, they were taking forever. So right when I'm about to ask what's taking so long, Jurassic Park theme song comes on and out come both of them in the inflatable dinosaur costumes. Best wedding ever. Not even mine will be able to live up to it edit. Holy cow! I just saw how many upvotes there were. Thanks, guys. Story 59. It's a bit on the nerdy side, and I'll admit it's not even remotely the worst thing I've heard about. Probably rates high up there on the best side, though. Guy memorized the entire poem of Baron and Luthien in the original High Elvish, Quenya, I think, and recited it as his best man speech at the Lord of the Rings-themed wedding. The Maid of Honor was not a general fan of Latiar and wrote her speech in Klingon to be annoying. One of the handmaidens provided a translation of questionable accuracy. I'm fairly certain there's no human equivalent for what that means, and I certainly wouldn't repeat it if there was. There was an entire section where the handmaiden wasn't translating and went through various shades of disgust and shock only to say, that was graphic. Story 60. At my own wedding, the officiant, who was probably 80, had a stroke while doing our vows. I'm not sure if I'm really actually married since he wasn't of sound. Apparently, prior to the ceremony, he was wandering around asking different people for things. He asked my sister-in-law for an adult. She went and got her mom. He just stares at her, then walks off. He also asked my niece for the wood. Turns out he was looking for his notebook. When I walk up to the podium, look at him and smile, and he gives me this blank look back. I thought he was drunk. Once my wife gets up there escorted by her parents, he just goes straight into vows. She was probably eight feet away from me still with her parents down some steps. I try to get him restarted on giving her away to me, and he snaps at me on the mic in front of 100 people. For what felt like eternity, no one said anything. My groomsman then goes to the podium and takes over with the whole, who gives this woman to be wed? The guy says, still meist, that's not in the plan. So at least now we are face to face. He proceeds to say some random speech, not what we gave him in advance, blew the agenda out of the water, mispronounced my wife's name, and after we kissed we turn to walk down the aisle, and the DJ is staring at me from the back, waiting on the officiant to present us to the audience. I turn to the officiant and he says, trailing off into mumbles, and now, Mr. and Mrs. Hum, for the record, my name is not Hum. After everyone goes to cocktail hour, my groomsman lays into this dude talking how he ruined the day, etc. Dude literally shat his pants right there and ran off to his car. 
No one had a clue WTF just happened. His wife calls us the next day saying he had a minor stroke and won't be doing weddings anymore. It makes for a good story, and I'm just happy he didn't have it whole driving and someone get hurt. Story 61. I had a junkie from another town break into my church the day I got married to look for stuff to steal. He ended up walking into a room of 10 women getting ready and said my bad, then left. After the reception, my new husband and I went back to clean up and get our regular clothes back on, and he was there again. He said, tell the newlyweds I said congratulations, then drove off in a stolen van. My mother-in-law was the church secretary, so she ended up talking to the cops. He was caught, and with the recommendation of the pastor and my ML, he went to mandated rehab. Stupid dingus couldn't have waited one oh no day. Story 62. I went to a very strange and religious wedding where the mother of the groom claimed she had a vision of heavenly gold dust falling on the bride and groom on their big day. She then pulled out a container and started throwing gold glitter onto them. One of the best things I've ever seen. It was impossible to not laugh. Story 63. My great aunt didn't want her son to marry his now wife. At the wedding, well afterwards, during the first dances, my great aunt had some kind of gooey stuff wrapped in plastic wrap and threw it at the bride during the first dance. She was escorted out by my cousins. It's been 16, 17 years. They have a 14-year-old who doesn't know her grandma. There wasn't a huge scene or anything. The wife was upset and she tried not to cry. She still had fun and luckily was able to still take pics in the dress as my great aunt threw it while her back was turned. I'd say her well. I just know that my cousin still doesn't speak to her. Story 64. We hired a non-denominational efficient for our wedding, and he met with us twice before the wedding to ask us personal questions and get a feel for us as a couple. He was warm, and we knew we picked the right guy to marry us. Wedding day arrives, and he begins his ceremony, which was a 45-mind speech about suffering and how life is about suffering, and we must suffer together through the storm of suffering that is human existence. At the reception, he picked a fight with my boss mentor over politics. It was magical.